thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. So this is the final Parkinson talk show. It started in 1971. It finishes more than 600 shows later, with a spectacular lineup of guests. All have had a special relationship with the show over these many years. There are the regulars, like our greatest film star, Sir Michael Caine, and the finest broadcaster of our time, David Attenborough. There's the football superstar and fashion icon that is David Beckham, and the former warm-up man on our show who became one of our best comedians, Peter Kay. Two dames, national treasure Judy Dench and housewife superstar Dame Edna Everidge. And music from a young man we championed on the show who went on to international stardom, Jamie Cullum. Now, first up, another star we were lucky enough to feature before the world claimed him. He's a man from the Glasgow shipyards who was merely windswept and interesting when we first met, but is now a global superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Connolly! <laughs> Your sing tune, The Archers, eh? Don't go! <laughs> Please don't go, it's the only television I get. Uh, Nobody else wants me. No. Please. Is, is that true? Wherever you go in the world, you're rejected by talk shows. Rejected by, by everybody bet. except you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's my job, to taking stray dogs, you know. This is what I'm... <laughs> now, listen, first of all, first things first, happy birthday. Thank you very, very much Sit indeed. Man. Sixty-five. I'm sixty-five. I'm, a, I'm an old age pensioner. Right. Which is very, very weird. People keep congratulating me as if I've done something. <laughs> you know, it's like you've just finished the marathon. It's in, and it's, I've just stayed awake for sixty-five years. <laughs> well, it's weird though getting old. You, weird things happen to you. You like my nose hair has accelerated. <laughs> it's, you know, all my other hair just grows at the same old speed, and I'm grateful to have some. But my nose hair has... I used to trim it once every 14 years or something. But now it's like three times a week. And, I've, and I was thinking about it, I said, why is this? You know, you take it for granted, your body knows what it's doing. So you think, what, what, what's it doing? What's going to happen to me that I'm going to need long nasal hair to deal with? <laughs> to tie it on top of my hair or something? Or maybe it's the ultimate comb-over like that. <laughs> the underarm stuff coming over the top. It grows in so I mean, ears too. Your ears get full. Well, I, can, I haven't seen my ears in a long not. time, so I don't, <laughs> I don't really care how much hair's there. But this stuff is just extraordinary. It grows over the top of my moustache and makes it look as if I've got a beak at the front. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. It's really weird. It's been happening for about ten years. I'll be washing myself in the morning and I'll look in the mirror and I'll have one hair growing out of my forehead. <laughs> Which definitely wasn't there the night before. <laughs> Sometimes it's here, but most of the time it's... And I said, I had a, a beauty about this length. And I said to Pam, look, look, there it is. And she went, Tch, and pulled it out. I said, I wanted that one, he's show people that. <laughs> what else about growing old, though? I mean, what's, are there any virtues to growing old? Yeah. Oh, there are. Well, there's like... I used to think about going to bed to have sex, and now I just think about going to bed. <laughs> Blessing, is yeah. it? I think oh, it would be great to get to bed, uh, but the, the, the biggest terror I have of growing old is smelling of pee. Are you, are you on the stage yet? I don't smell of pee, but I live in terror of smelling yeah. of pee. <laughs> and I often wonder if I do smell of pee, because it might be like, you know, you can't smell it when it's you. No. Like, you know what I mean? When you go to your farm, when you first arrive at a farm, you go, good Jesus, how can these people live with this? And then ten minutes later, you're going, well, that smells away, there must have been a breeze. You just get kind of used to it. Another thing is involuntary noises. I started making involuntary... I don't mean just like... I mean, it's like... I pick things up and I go, ah, well, there you go! I'm like old guys, I remember old guys, yeah, do you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> and getting out of a chair... No! <laughs> <laughs> but my, my, my cure for that 
is to change the conversation mm. so as they don't hear you doing it. Mm. So you, you think, I must get out of the chair. So you, you start a conversation and what about Iraq? Isn't that whole thing a dreadful mess? And they'll go, I know, it's terrible. And then you go, ah, the whole thing's a disgrace if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get into a beanbag chair. <laughs> you might never get out. <laughs> After you're 35, don't go near a beanbag. You'll be flopping about like a turtle on its back. <laughs> you have to make excuses. You say to the kids, oh, on you go off to bed. I want to watch Discovery Channel here. <laughs> There's a great program about bats shitting in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> And then when they're gone, you can roll onto the floor. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Good and, oh, and Scarlett! <laughs> my daughter Scarlett. When they were making a birthday cake for me, and she announces at the top of her voice, you're in four boxes of candles, Dad! Apparently there's 20 in a box. I said, keep your bloody voice now. <laughs> they light the candles they put on an asbestos suit and a welder's helmet. <laughs> paint coming off the wall. <laughs> Did you ever imagine, though, do you remember the first time we met? It was about 1974-75, the first show you ever did. The first television show, I think, in this country. Yes. You ever did, yeah. And, uh, how, how brave were you? Well, <laughs> I, no, it wasn't brave at all. I mean, how inspired were we to do it? Oh, thank but, you. But, I mean, but, but the extraordinary thing about it was it was just one joke, wasn't it, that did it, that changed it was, everything. It was amazing, and it, and it, became, it made me famous overnight. It was the weirdest experience of my life because my manager at the time, Frank Lynch, we were driving into the studio to do your show and, and a, a football supporter in Valencia, a Scotty supporter, had told me it. He just told me the joke in the street and I just leant against the wall laughing. I've never met the guy again. I'd love to shake him by the hand. <laughs> but I was saying to my manager, I'm going to tell that joke, I think. And he said, oh, don't even think about it. It's too dirty for television. In those days, it was. It was. I mean, it's it was, it was but, a but, wild But the joke. next morning, it, it's kind of, you became that, that sort of star. Let's be reminded, this is 1974, 75. There's a guy came up to me in the street. <laughs> I hope I can get away with this. It's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he said, hey, Biggin. You know, in Scotland, they call me Biggin. And I'm not very big, but everybody there's off a wee, you know. But he, he said, did you hear about the one, the guy had done his wife in and that? And I said, no. He said, this guy was going out to meet his friend in the pub, and he went down. He said, oh, hello, how's it going? He said, fine, fine. He said, how's the wife? He said, oh, she's dead. I said, what? He says, dead, dead, dead again. Dead. I murdered her. <laughs> Forget it. She kidding me on. It's no, no, it's morning. He said, Look, I'm not talking to you if you keep on talking like that. He said, Well, please yourself. I'll show you if you want. He said, No, oh, show me. So are we up to his tenement building through the close? That's the entrance to the tenement. <laughs> <laughs> into the back green, into the wash house, and sure enough, there's a big mound of earth. There's a bum sticking out of it. <laughs> he says, Is that her? He says, Aye. He says, what'd you leave a bum sticking up for? <laughs> he says, I need somewhere to park my bike. <laughs>